Hello all, welcome back to another Feature Friday. Okay, we're just gonna deal with the ponytail being on the messier side of the messy ponytail today. Um, I know I missed an upload last week. I was doing great for a while, so we're just gonna go with it. I did read a lot of great stuff over vacation, but a lot of it was also stuff I needed to sit with. So this one that I'm gonna talk about today, I actually read last week, but I needed to kind of process it. It had a lot of poetic, beautiful language, and that is Bestiary by Kay Ming Chang. Hi, real quick while I'm editing, I know that I probably pronounced the title of this book wrong. Bestiary seems to be how it's more pronounced, but also in the New York Public Library discussion, the author talked about how even she struggles with the pronunciation, even though it's important to the book. So, I wasn't trying to disrespect it. I uh, just don't know how to say words that I learned how I read and internalized before I learned how to say them. So sorry. I also needed to kind of just process everything that had happened in the book. And I know that I'm coming from a distinct cultural outsider perspective on this. So I did watch a New York Public Library conversation uh, between Kay Ming Chang and Charles Yu, um, who wrote Interior Chinatown, which is still on my list to get to, about this book. And it was a really great illuminating conversation, both about the themes at play in the book, but also about craft. So I would highly recommend checking out that interview below. This book is kind of hard to describe. The blurb does it in a really lyrical, magical way. That's why copywriters and editors, um, I was going to say make good money, but they don't. So still thank you. <laughs> um, but it is an intergenerational novel that follows mother. Well, okay, so mother's the middle. Daughter, mother, and grandmother is how it's structured. And we start with mother, but daughter is our kind of I would argue our most active driving voice in the narrative and is our more current voice in terms of how we think of linear time. But one of the things that I really responded to in the New York Times, New York Times, New York Public Library interview was how there was a discussion of linear time and that construct of linear time and this need, especially from Western literature, to have narratives that follow a really kind of strict timeline, or I would argue like a more Aristotelian plot structure as we understand it, right? And that's one of the things that I found really interesting and really intriguing about this work is that it doesn't follow that structure as we think about it. And it weaves in and out of itself in a way that explores generations, memory, trauma, how we build narratives around these things that last generations, or how we build narratives for ourselves that help us make sense of what we're going through. There is a lot of really hard things in this book in terms of trauma, both PTSD, like war type trauma, and also abuse, whether that be parental abuse, spousal abuse, um, this disconnect of how we care for each other. And again, a lot of that I don't know that I can speak to the depth of that because I don't have the cultural perspective that I would like that I would like to have in order to really dig into that and speak to that at its full breadth. But I think it's done in such a really engaging way. And I say engaging and that feels like kind of a fluff word, but it really pulls me in intellectually and emotionally to these characters' inner lives. 
and the way it so the the kind of inciting incident if you will to steal an Aristotelian term for a book that kind of shies away from Aristotelian ideas is the daughter wakes up and she has a tiger tail and this tiger tail kind of connects her back to some stories that exist within her family and this tale then becomes something she has to grapple with and whether it is a help or a hindrance to her is kind of a question of the novel the, the language the language in this book put this down for a second is very poetic so while this book is only like 250 ish pages long this took me a couple of days to read because I didn't want to just I couldn't just rush through it I had to kind of sit with the language and I wanted to sit with the language right like there was so much going on and so like for instance one of the lines and I didn't write down a page number so you're just gonna have to trust me that this came from the book because I'm gonna not I'm not gonna be reading it from the novel itself um but one of the lines that really stuck with me and like I wanted to to just kind of languish in for a while was this one and I'm gonna read it verbatim and it said once I asked her what happened to a body when it died she said it became a story and death was just another translation of it like what that's such a good phrase like that's the kind of language we're dealing with and it does it's not like it's not overwritten. It doesn't feel overwrought. It doesn't feel like we're forcing these kind of profound statements. This is one of those books that there's a lot to dig into and explore and discuss. I think it would be an excellent book club book. It's not one of those books that you're going to read and like be able to articulate in a clean way what you just experienced. Or at least I was not able to articulate in a clean way what I just experienced. And I was it was very interesting when I got to the acknowledgments because I read them and there wasn't like a thank you to like Toni Morrison and like Helen Oyeyemi. And I was like, yes, this makes sense. Like these are the kinds of narratives that I would group this in with, both for its exploration of trauma, but also like how that can be written and how it can be explored because we're kind of digging in to complex, ugly emotions. And I will say that that's one thing that the book really succeeded in was it didn't shy away from the ugly. It was very visceral and earthy isn't the word I'm looking for, but like we talked about like toes in a box or very connected to our bodies and I think they talked about this a little bit in the New York Public Library interview so I want to give credit there but just this idea of it felt very in the body which was a really interesting juxtaposition in how imaginative and mythical everything felt and it, there were these as I mentioned layers of story and myth so I never as a reader personally never really knew you know what was true and, I, and it's the emotions that ground this and this need because there's this like thought of like forward progression in terms of like moving forward but it's also like narratively always looking back has she inherited some of this trauma in the same way that she now has a tail and what is the tales center to this and then she also has okay so she has a brother that we interact with which is interesting because like this is a very matriarchal driven narrative and she also has a friend who is more like a girlfriend, but we don't really label anything, uh, Ben. 
and the way they try to decode this. So part of the narrative is the daughter is getting letters from her grandmother through these holes that she's digging in the backyard. And this is kind of like a common theme. Like we open the book on, on the mother's family digging for gold that they buried somewhere in the backyard. And, and I think that's when they're in Arkansas. And the, the father has buried this gold somewhere. And the mother is like, the grandmother narratively, but the mother of the mother is like, kind of has this real urgency to finding this gold. So they're digging this up. And then we go to holes and digging holes for the daughter. So like two, like the next, I don't, generations are hard for me. So I guess two generations. Um, and so, okay, so then they're translating these letters and it's really interesting because it's like, it plays with the idea of how translation is its own interpretation and its own form of storytelling. And then we get comments in footnotes from Ben. So we also get kind of an outsider perspective or Ben is kind of like a voice for us as readers of like, is this really what happened? Like, what is this? This book is beautiful and it's heartbreaking. I, I don't really have a way to define it. I've had to sit with it because I've had to just kind of process what I read. And it's one of those that I'll go back to and it will be a completely different experience. But this, yeah, read this book. I, it just came out last month, this month. I don't know what time it is anymore, but it's, it's really gorgeous. It, I think it's well worth your time. And I think it's a great winter read because it's something that you can kind of sit with a hot drink and just kind of mull over. If you like poetry, this whole narrative is is poetry. It plays with form. It play, like, there's just so much. This is like the heart of literary fiction, writer's books kind of stuff. So I've not done it nearly enough justice, but hopefully I've said something that even remotely resembles the ideas of this book. If you've read it, I'd love to hear your thoughts because I'm sure they're much more articulate and insightful than mine were. And yeah, so let me know. But definitely one to check out. So I will see you again next time for another book.